forget what episode it, this is. Uh, but we're live on our usual YouTube March. channel, Silver Fox BJJ, every Friday. And then we're also live on BJJ Fanatics. So, guys, again, if you have any comments on uh, the video or the audio, please let us know during the, this this. Uh, this so. show or whatever you want to call it so that way we can make corrections once I hear it usually we basically try to have the consistency and basically the same equipment and try to do it here the acoustics here is not the greatest but it is decent um, but I have a better chance of correcting it uh, with uh, during, the live. Yeah, during the during the show I noticed that our new mic John Germany one of my, my good purple belts sitting behind the, the cameras the, the, the don't adjust it but you can see how the handle is crooked uh, <laughs> it's just my job don't touch it uh guys on bjj fanatics if you're not familiar with the format start asking questions the live questions get priority we usually start with a, a question and then we take over whatever live questions there are ryan hopefully you're on uh, the feed and hopefully you can hear us okay um so guys what we got a question uh regarding scorpion uh, electric chair lockdowns. Yeah. So, again, there is a variety of names, but basically, what it means is that I'm on top of half guard, and the bottom guy locks up his feet, just as so, and he, then he starts to go deep under my legs and start to torque, and the objective is to get a sweep. Okay? So this is the objective for the bottom guy. Um, let me tell you something. I hate that technique. I truly hate it, and I'll tell you why. I have seen this technique. I actually saw a good black belt win, you know, a, a good Naga, you know, like a high, high level, not, not regional, but like um, Naga Worlds and you know, where you get a decent level of participant, like some, and some high, very high level guys as well, win the whole tournament, uh, basically just doing this. Lockdown sweeps, electric chair sweeps, scorpion sweeps. So it works. Yeah, it works. However, I have also seen, in that one competition, but I've seen it also outside of competition, where people blow their knee out, usually the guy on top trying to resist the sweep, but I've also seen the guy on the bottom pop their knee because of the strain that it places on their knees trying to perform this technique. So, long story short, I am not a fan. However, we do need to know how to get out of it. So we're gonna go sort of the, the sequence, how you defend it. Obviously, we start with you know, you're not too deep in, you kind of saw the, the, uh, the possibility of it happening early, then okay, you got caught in it, you counter it early, which, and then you kind of got caught late, and then really, really late. So again, your chances of defending things is always better when you catch it, you intercept the attack early. So one of the things that if I'm, if, if, if I'm about to get locked up in it, so this is, this is what makes it possible. My, my body and my leg, especially the leg that's being caught, being lined up with Enrique, okay, with his legs. This, it makes it very likely you're gonna get caught, okay? So anytime I'm in that half guard, I sweep that leg back. When I'm in on top of half guard, guys, I always try to go as perpendicular as possible. First of all, it makes it very difficult for him to sweep me. The sweep comes when your body's lined up. Okay, and he uses that leg to, uh, to line, up, line you up. But if, if, if I'm perpendicular, as he's rocking me, I just post. So my hand's over here, and my leg, one leg, is back there. So again, you do this, you're likely to get caught in it. You do this, very unlikely. Um, I have some students that use this quite effectively. I call one of them affectionately Scorpion King. Uh, can you pivot, Enrique? So uh, a lot of times if I have that guy and I sweep my leg back, he can ferret it out, so I just lock it. So this is not good for guard passing, but it buys you time to basically start to manage his outside leg in a way that I, uh, enables me to pass his half guard. 
but make sure that this, so here he might still, be, most people probably cannot get it. The people that are good at it will, they will feed it. All right, so if I'm in that position, I sweep it and I actually hide it. I usually, my, my favorite half guard pass is, you know, close to the hips, you know, I, I manage the leg, pop up and then kick out. And um, I can do it with an underhook or overhook on this side, it really doesn't matter. So uh, we've covered that in the past, so I don't want to go over that, the half guard passing. Um, I, I usually do deep half guard passing. I usually try to put them in triangle, or I use that, that half guard pass. Again, we've covered that in the past, so please refer to those episodes. All you do is put in Silver Fox BJJ and specific technique, and it usually pops up. We try to use different, both names or three names if there is if there's such a thing. So this is called, I call this, this prevention. So anytime I'm in half guard, so if I'm passing, the guy starts to lock me up, I just take it back. I, if I don't need to lock it down, I won't. If I need, I'll hide it, make sure that this, it's not available. All right, by the way, guys, I am not vulnerable to, uh, to a tr uh, inverted triangle, okay? So even if he does manage to, yeah, this is gonna, <laughs> yeah, this. <laughs> Enrique did not stretch, so I'm stretching him today. <laughs> Um, so that's prevention. Now, this one is really good, really, really good, and I love to do it to the guys that have this as a favorite weapon from the bottom, but they're not really, really good at it because it literally turns the tables on them. You need to read this quickly and be able to stand up. If you do this, guys, you will submit it, okay? This is a thing of beauty. So he, he locks it up. So this, I'm a, I'm a little bit late. He locks it up. I either post on him or on the floor. It doesn't matter. Stand up. As soon as I do, your foot flat on the, on the floor. And Enrique, can you unlock your legs? <laughs> and then I slowly start to lean my back. Now, guys, imagine you got into an altercation with somebody like this. Yeah, come on, hit me. I just, I just protect my my family jewels. Come on, hit me. Come on. But you have to come down to hit me, though, to not hit No, me. I don't. <laughs> okay. If true. there's any possibility of that. Let's stop that. So let's look at the entry again. So this is sort of, you get, he manages the lock, lock up, lock down. Lock up the lockdown. Lock up the lockdown. However, you are able to stand up. Again, as, as soon as I feel his feet going in that position, I'm already, I don't even wait for him to lock it up. All I'm doing is hands on the floor or, or on him, standing up. Foot flat, guys. A lot of people, you know, the pressure comes from this. All right? So, I'm passing the half guard. I realize it because, oh. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I, he was too slow. Uh, by the way, it works better the further down his, his feet are. You could just slide him. He, there's nothing he can do right now. <laughs> this is a thing of beauty. So if you have in your academy, and remember guys, I don't refer to my school ever as a gym. It's an academy, it's a school, dojo, institution of higher learning, whatever you want to call it. Studio. Studio. <laughs> Just, <laughs> studio, studio is where they cut your hair. So as soon as I feel this post, bring it in, stand up, stop, 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 stop. and you got a submission. So that's when you intercept it a little later. I would not bait people with it. The reason is like if you cannot stand up, now you deep in. Okay. So let's go over. The idea that this time I could not stand up. He's got underhooks. Um, I cannot stand up or cannot, and he starts to lift the leg and he starts to. So what I need to do is, is make sure that I get it. If I can get an underhook, what I'm going to do is place my head on this side of his body. So if I'm on his right, I'll place him on the right. And then I shuffle my feet towards the right until you can slip out of the lock down, okay? So 
let's look at it again. So uh, if, if he has both underhooks, he's going to be a little tougher. Notice that I'm sort of, as soon as I feel him going in and I realize, okay, this is, this is a lockup, I'm not going to be able to stand up. And the reason why I cannot stand up is because of the underhook. So I start to sink my weight down. Worse, sometimes you can also uh, get the, the shallow guillotine that I've been teaching you for years um, to control his head because now he cannot rock back and forth. So that's another possibility. Um, I want to you know, make sure that I control that. You know, you have five finger guillotines, the iron fist, um, no guillotine or whatever you want to call it. So I start to kind of sink and keep my hips heavy. Uh, but if I... Uh, if I'm here and he, I, he starts to rock, he starts to go underneath, I'm looking for an underhook. And I'm going to shuffle over to the side till my leg slips out, and then I, then I can let him bring the hips back. Make sure you hide it now. Don't let him get, get to it again. You may make one mistake, so don't, let, don't make that mistake twice. Guys, the last one is, okay, what happens if... if uh, yeah, it just basically you start to, you know, the guy's just lined up. You could not do any one of them. And he starts rocking you back and forth. What I usually tell people, don't try to hold out because this is when, when guy tries to stop it, that's when knees pop. So usually when the guy's got a tight, you know, try to straighten out the legs and try to keep them kind of tight or locked, out, locked up so he cannot be swept. Yes, in competition, that's two points. But in training, it's, yeah, it could be two points if you count him, but... Um, what I usually do is, is, is I try to relax my legs. I don't know if you can see the difference. Right now, I'm trying to stop the sweep. So my legs are kind of locked out and kind of uh, as wide as space as possible. I just relax. At some point, I just let him sweep me. You might be, if you watched our episodes for a while, you should be able to five finger guillotine him. Uh, but if, if you really cannot, as he starts rocking you, you know, you feel tension in your, in your legs, in your knees, relax your legs, let him sweep you. Because even if he cannot get the guillotine, he will release the hold once he's on top to try to get past the legs. Okay. So if it starts to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting, getting out of this, let him sweep you. And fight from the bottom. It's way better than having your knees blow, knee blown out and getting submitted. All right. Uh, how are we doing? Do we have good audio? Good. Great comments on audio. Everything. Uh, people are really enjoying the topic. Um, high Bart from Holland on the BJJ Fanatic. And Nicholas Davis is freezing to do on Friday. Um, oh, nice. All right, guys. The, uh, the first question we have is um, based on mount position and skip wrap. So how he uh, you know, moves and stuff. From mount. So they could probably neutralize you. Okay, so. Nothing on, on topic, only this. So that's on YouTube, so you guys should know better by now because we covered this. And not that long ago, but let's go over it. So, so if I'm mounted, and so if I'm mounted, you know, and, and he's flat, I'm not going to try to look for the gift wrap right now. It's just too, um, uh, too, too difficult because if I start to gift wrap, even if I have a good setup, this creates an opening for him. Yeah, I'm, I, I blocked him from coming up with my foot. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you pivot? So my foot, it's very important, guys. Precision is very, very important. This is precision. So I know where he's going to go. If my foot was kind of like, like here, he's out. Okay, so I place my foot in a way to intercept his possible escape. But now that he's on his side, I would have, but it kind of gives him an opening that he might be able to manage to escape from. Yeah. <laughs> so when, if he's flat, what I'm going to do is attack attack him flat because uh, you know it, it's a very simple thing when you're in position to put somebody away or in very dominant position you want control you don't want big movements uh, because if i'm making big movements there's a possibility that i create an opening for him to escape 
So I, I when I'm on, on top or you know in a position to finish him, I try to make small movements and, and make the submission clean and tight. Now, let's go back. So if, if I'm mounted, I generally speaking try to attack. So if I'm here, I will generally try to attack this arm. One of my favorites is that modified, yeah, modified Americana. Guys, notice, Enrique, can you pivot for me, please? Which way? Uh, the shorter way. That's the longer way. <laughs> so notice, guys, first of all, I'm going for the submission, but also my, the placement of my legs. The placement of my legs is in a way to prevent him from escaping, and I, my pelvis is down, so I constantly keep pressure. So this is one of my favorites. Uh, you know, you just saw before sort of the um, Nogi Ezekiel. So I have that as well. And at some point, if he, he needs to make a big attempt to escape. At that point, once he get, makes a big, big attempt to escape, I will then attack whatever he gives me. Usually it's the arm. So let's, let's make a, you know, if, the, if he just sits there, I will make his position untenable, meaning that I will e attack either that um, modified Americana, iron fist, arm triangle, and so forth. But once he makes, so if I'm, if I'm here and he makes a big, so he, you know, he's making a big, so from here, I will take his back. So once he decides that he does not want to be smothered, he does not want to be pressured, um, then, uh, then I move, then I attack whatever he's exposing, be it his neck or be it his arm. Uh, but if he's flat, I will generally tighten the noose and try to hit him with that, with very little movement, which is again, the modified Americana, the Ezekiel I like, arm triangle, those are some of the things. Now, if he starts to, if I get a tilt towards one or the other side, that's when I start to attack the back. So, so if I'm mounted, yeah, so here, he doesn't even have to tilt that far, but one, yeah, once his elbow kind of clears my midsection, I'm gonna take the gift rack at the, and attack the back. All right, so once he clears, I control his arm with my chest, get the gift wrap. From here, I will actually abandon the mount, slide up, make sure, and this is an extremely powerful position. There is several finishes and I will just, he will actually decide which one I'll dispatch him with. He literally, go ahead. Uh, I will not let, yeah. This, this doesn't hurt me. It, <laughs> so he almost decides. Again, once I'm in that position, his position is untenable because I can keep ratcheting up the pressure. Um, I can finish him with the, with the neck or the arm. So I will basically let him choose which one and I will try to minimize my movement. He's gonna make the move, big movement. Do we have any questions on the BJJ Fanatics uh, page as well? Nothing in particular, no. Oh. Um, but people are really enjoying this content. I mean, I was seeing like people rolling on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they usually, usually, they they usually do enjoy the content. content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> BJJ Fanatics, wake up guys. Here's the, you know, here's the issue. Because we have a pretty much global audience. We need a coupon code for them to wake up. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, guys. No, no, no. They have. <laughs> BJJ <laughs> Fanatics has the armbar domination or whatever DVD I put out. Uh, it was on, on sale. On sale. <laughs> As you, guys, if you've been watching for a while, you know I have mixed feelings about this. I've been training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for 30 years. You know, the first right. five or seven, maybe, you know, two, three times a week now, uh, seven days a week. And I have mixed feelings about being 50% off. And when I say mixed feeling, I don't like it. <laughs> so, uh, it's but, a very clear feeling. <laughs> but actually, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we do this show live every Friday, 1030 on, on, on YouTube. That's our regular slot. And that once a month, we basically, we uh, jointly deal with BJJ Fanatics. And, partner, uh, up. partner up. But BJJ Fanatics, I think a lot of the, a lot of the viewers there are US-based. And, uh, you know, that's 1030 in the mornings. Most people are working. Whereas we have a global audience and Europeans are just... Heading getting home from, uh, you know, getting out from work and having a cold, going for a cold beer. You know, the, the Japanese and the Koreans and the Malaysians, they're ready to go to sleep. And the Australians, they're ready to go to sleep so they can watch just before they fall asleep. Hopefully we don't, hopefully we don't make it help you fall asleep quicker. Adopt, so. put an additional April Fool's 
code uh, full twenty twenty three. <laughs> way more than fifty percent off. Oh man, yeah. It raises the price with the beer plus four. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Double, double the price, yeah. guys. Buy, buy a lot of the DVDs. Jokes on you. Yeah, jokes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're cu- we're getting out of time, um, uh, guys. I have another good topic for next time. I think we I want to talk about kaizen, which is uh, the self improvement, which I believe is integral to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and any martial martial arts training. Be serious about it. I think. You know, you want to go go kaizen. You know, for self improvement, and for even if small adjustments can make a very very big difference. And uh, we'll talk about it uh, probably next week. Um, again, the the uh, I think a lot of people kind of use the, the the idea of old school, which is okay. Old school is I do it this way. I've done it this way forever, which is okay. But you know, some guys enjoy driving around. You know, Model T every Sunday and just put, put every, you know, for, you know, to the local show and come back. Uh, I want to have a car with modern brakes and, you know, nice big engine and so forth. But, um, you know, even if you have, if you kind of subscribe to old school, which old, old school means that fundamentals, yes, fundamentals are very important. And probably you can, you can like Haja Gracie's one, in my mind, the goat, but in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but the point is, uh, you know, we could have an argument. There's a few other, you know, that I w- would put in that category. Uh, but the idea is that you make your basics very, very precise and very slight adjustments and an evolution that make those basics very dangerous. So that to me is not, you know, to me that's, that's sort of the way, that, that's Kaizen as well. Anyways, guys, uh, Help us spread the news about BJJ and, and sort of focusing on technical aspects, which I believe, you know, basically is good timing, good technique, meaning, you know, constantly self-improve. And we'll see you next week. Spread the word.